Hey there, fourth graders. This is Mrs. Smith here. Um, today we are doing Unit 2, Lesson 3 on page 49 of our books. And today we are talking about using our knowledge of those smaller math facts that you memorized in third grade or over the summer or are still working on memorizing, but make sure you're staying on top of that to multiply with larger numbers. So third grade, we spent a lot of time, you know, building up that fluency for single digit multiplication. And that's still super useful when you're multiplying with larger numbers because of the base 10 system and place value. Um, just a reminder, the factors are the things that you multiply. So like two times three, those are the factors and your product is your answer in multiplication. So for this one, it would be like six. So you would say factors of six include two and three, or six is the product of two times three, okay? So just be, be comfortable using that academic language. Alrighty, so uh, here we go. It says, look for patterns. Multiplying greater numbers in your head is easier when you learn patterns of multiplication with tens. Start with column A, this column, and look for the patterns used to get the expressions in each column. Copy and complete the table. So for two times three, these are both numbers that only have something in the ones place, right? So it's two, just one time, times three, just one time. So then you take your two and your three, and you get six when you multiply that together, and your one times one, and you get one, and six times one is just six, right? Now, if you move to having a larger factor, like 30 rather than three, something with um, something in the tens place, you can, decompose or break it apart into smaller factors that then you can multiply together. So our two is two times one and our 30 is three times 10. So then we take our two and our three and we get six and our one and our 10 and we get a product of 10. Then we just do six times 10, which you know is 60. Okay. Then sometimes both of the factors can have something in the tens place, right? So you can have 20 times 30. So our 20 is really two times 10, and our 30 is really three times 10. So then what do you think we're gonna do? We're gonna take our two and our three and get six, and our 10 times 10, and we know 10 tens is what, right? A hundred. So six times 100 is 600. Now, let's think about this question. How are the expressions in column B different from the expressions in column A? Now, an expression is like a math sentence without the equal sign. If it has an equal sign in an answer, it's an equation, but if it doesn't have the equal sign, it's an expression. So how are these different from those? They end up getting the same answer. The difference is in column B, the factors, we're gonna use that academic language factors, are decomposed into more manageable numbers. So we'll say that in column B, the factors from A, have been decomposed into um, more manageable numbers. In this case, it's um, using place value. I think it's always using place value. Okay, in column C, we see that each expression can be written as a number times a place value. Which of these factors gives more information about the size of the product? Now, which of these 
gives more information about the size of the product or the answer. Is it the digit that was like the, the beginnings that you're multiplying by the place value? Or is it the place value itself? What do you think? It's the place value, right? Okay, why is six the first digit of the products in column D? Well, we have six times one and we got six ones. We have six times 10 and we got six tens. We have six times 100 and we got six hundreds. So it only makes sense, right? So we have six ones, which is six, six, tens which is 60 and six hundreds which is 600 all right why are there different numbers of zeros in the products in column d why did the two times three end up with six and two times 30 end up with 60 what do you think? As the factors use, or I should say, as the factors have higher place values, the products, the answers, also increase in their place value. So even though for all of these we're using the idea that two times three is six, depending on how large or how many you know groups of three we have, we had to increase our product in the same amount. Okay, I'll make sure you can see that as the factors, sorry, that's a little bit messy, have higher place values, the products also increase in their place value. All right, now in if you have a Think Central assignment, it's very likely that you will see tables just like this, so make sure you're thinking about what we're doing here. Okay. We're completing the tables just like we did on the previous one. I want you to give it a shot. So pause, give it a try, and then hit play when you're ready, if you feel comfortable. Here we go. Six times three. So six times one is six. Three times one is three. Six times three is 18. And one times one is one. So our answer is 18. <clears throat> now six times 30, six times one is six and three times 10 is 30. So six times three is 18, and one times 10 is 10. So then our, our product, you know, will, will be 180, 18 tens, right? <clears throat> okay, 60 times 30, six times 10 is the 60, three times 10 is the 30, six times three is what? still 18, 10 tens is 100, 18 hundreds is 1800, right? All right, if you stay with me on this one, give this one a shot, I'm pretty sure you can do it. Let's see, okay, here I go. Five times eight, five is the five times one, eight is the eight times one, five times eight is 40, one times one is one, so our answer is 40. Five times 80, so five times one is five. Eight times 10 is the 80. 40 times 10 is 40 tens, so 400. 50 times 80, so how do you get 50? Five times 10. How do you get 80? Eight times 10. Five times eight, 
40. 10 times 10, 100. So 40, 100 is 4,000. Okay. Why did the products in table two have more digits than the products in table one? Let's look back at table one. So here we only ended up having something that got to 600. And our first product here, two times three, was a single digit answer, single digit product of six. Looking over here, six times three got us a two digit product, 18. Now our final answer, it has um, four digits and this one had three. So it's really based on what the, the factors are, right? If the ones, if the single digit version of the factors leads to a single digit answer, it will have fewer digits when you increase your place value than something. Let me think of a simpler way to write that. So we'll say two times three equals a single digit product equals a single digit product six times three equals a double digit product and that continues to be true as you increase in place value Last question, why are there more zeros in the products in table 30? Or sorry, table three, <laughs> table 30, table three, than the products in table two. So look over here, our original product, when we just are working with single digits, it has a zero already. This one didn't have a zero. What do you think? If the original product from a single digit multiplication from single digit factors has a zero in it, there will be more zeros. So we'll say five times eight equals 40. There was already a zero in the one's place. Okay, now go and check and see if you have a an assignment for today, and I'll catch you next time. All right, bye-bye.